Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I hope everyone had a good uh, and festive New Year's and that uh, 2024 is filled with many victories over the board. And so in today's video we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, this game was played uh, more recently than my other uh, videos if you've watched them. Those were played several years ago but this one was uh, just a few months ago at the 123rd US Open. It was played uh, round four of that tournament. I was on the white side playing against a young young lad um, named Colin and uh, this game started off pretty pretty simple pretty straightforward and then it took a turn uh, for the worst for him. So let's just jump right into it and see uh, how it how it played out and where the mistake was. So white began with uh, e4. I'm playing on the black side. I responded with e5. Knight f3 and now knight f6. This uh, opening variation by uh, black is um, considered the Petrov defense but um, white decides uh, here on this next move with knight c3 to sidestep and not go into the main lines of the Petrov. So now we get into the four knights opening. And if you watched um, one of my other videos, um, you'll see that we did play um, another four knights opening, another game. And so, but in this game, white changed it up by playing uh, d4 here. And uh, this now turns into the Scotch game with the Four Knights variation of that opening. So we just kind of, with the opening moves, we went from one opening to the other until we settle on this one. And so nothing uh, too spectacular after E takes D4, Knight's going to take on D4. And now Bishop to B4, uh, pinning the Knight here on C3 against the King all very common stuff and of course we're putting now more pressure on the e4 pawn since the knight is pinned um, and so here my opponent uh, decides to uh, trade the knights so knight took on c6 and I responded with pawn takes uh, c6 the b pawn not the d pawn uh, taking with the d pawn would be less accurate because it would force the exchange of queens a little a little early and black would lose the right to castle so we go with the b pawn uh, bishop to d3 now by white continuing the development and getting ready to castle still equal here black castles king side and white also castles king side and now this move d5 by black it has to be played in order to open up black's position uh, if in most openings on the black side black is playing for equality and in order to maintain it going forward you have to open up the position and get your uh, pieces out and uh, free up your game this is the point of d5 in, even if there's exchanges in the center uh, if white decides to do this well then we're going to fix our pawn structure so everything's um, all good here uh, in here, my opponent decides to play uh, with the next move is pawn to e5. Not so accurate, but it's not fatal. Here, um, I think he felt maybe trading in the center would give black a really strong pawn center. He may have not wanted to go through with it. Probably be a little bit more aggressive since it's a big tournament. And um, so it makes sense. But uh, it's not as accurate, though, because this pawn on e5 is going to be really exposed and even though the game didn't go into lines where we attack the e, the, the e pawn if white had played accurately then yes the, the pawn would have fallen later on but here knight to g4 um, is how I got the knight out of the way uh, on this forward square the knight is defended by the bishop on c8 so there's no worries about tr the trade here losing the piece but the, the knight is a little exposed so we will have to just keep an eye on things but again like I said the, the pawn on e5 can be taken if the knight comes under comes under pressure 
later on, so so no big deal. And here is where my opponent made um, the 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 fatal mistake here. Uh, he sees that the pawn is under attack and decides he's going to go on ahead and defend it rather naturally with rook to e1. And I did give this a, an evaluation of a blunder because the evaluation just turns completely against <clears throat> white. White, <clears throat> white is now strategically losing this game after rook e1. It seems like an innocent move. But um, as we see here in the next couple moves, white's position is going to fall apart. And the main reason for that is because you notice there's no knight on f3 anymore. Uh, we exchange uh, white exchanged it off early on and instead of developing their pieces to cover for this uh, missing piece we got a situation now where there's no defenders uh, piece help around the uh, the king and so he's the king just gets exposed and comes under a strong attack so the move here that I played was queen h4 now typically we don't like to bring our queen very early in the game especially this early but under the circumstances there's no there's no non f3 so all these squares are open here and so I put my queen here and also uh, f2 is under pressure as well um, and so this just makes a lot of sense to put the queen on h4 get white under a lot of pressure and hopefully the white position breaks which in this case it, it, it quite did literally bishop to e3 by by white uh, developing the final piece a minor piece and trying to resolve at least some of the pressure here on f on f2 um, but still we continue with queen takes on h2 with check and the king is just getting flushed out after king f1 now knight takes on e3 with check with the fork here a tactic attack on the king and the queen so now it forces uh, white to trade off uh, this piece and expose the white king even more uh, that bishop on e3 was a, a valuable defender for the white side so it was it made sense to get rid of it right away rook takes on e3 and now queen h1 attacking the king only one move which is king e2 and again this is what i was talking about earlier with flushing the king out the king started on e1 got castled to g1 and now the king is back in the center this is not where we want our king especially after we've castled the king this early in the game so the king is just going to come under a huge attack and uh, let's just see how it how it happens bishop to g4 check and this is another one of our basic tactics which is the skewer that is we are attacking the king or a valuable piece and when this piece moves out of the way if it was to move out of the way for instance uh, it would expose the the piece behind it to an attack so another skewer here against the king this is why we didn't want the king to get flushed out because now there's just tactics everywhere um, white had some ch choices here to defend and he just decided to go with rook f3 to block the the uh, the check and also now the rook is pinned against the king so all of white's major pieces here are just under attack by this bishop strong bishop strong move um, so this is why the position just got way out of hand very quickly um, you just see the the black pieces just become very powerful queen takes g2 was the next move and um, again more pressure on this pin piece f3 it's under attack twice and it's going to be lost here with check and then the attack along this diagonal is going to continue and maybe the, the king might even get get checkmated if we're not careful my opponent here found an interesting move not the greatest move in the world but had it worked 
it would have been a really um, good way of defending, a creative way of defending the rook on f3. Unfortunately, it doesn't work because of tactics. Um, but queen h1 here does bring another defender uh, to the to to the rook. Like I said, if if the, if the tactics had worked out, but unfortunately they didn't. And after bishop takes on f3 here with check, my opponent resigned the game here because they're just going to lose an incredible amount of material and uh, there's just no coming back from this. And just to give you just a quick quick look at what could have happened, let's just say uh, the king moved up to uh, e3 here to avoid uh, the, the get out of the check here. Then we can just trade the queens here. Queen takes, rook takes, and then after bishop takes, rook, we're just up two rooks here and a couple pawns for our efforts. And white's just completely losing this game. We might trade off uh, the knight here next. So there's just there's just no no counterplay here for white. This is completely hopeless. And so that's why my opponent, after um, bishop takes f3 check here, just decided to resign, uh, as there was really no nothing to play for anymore. And so we saw how the position quickly fell apart for white after this queen h4 move because of this rookie one, in essence, blunder. Strategically, it wasn't the, the best move because it, it took, it took a, a defender off of the f2 square. And so I think if my opponent had seen how strong this queen h4 move was, they wouldn't have been so quick to move with the rook. So I hope that you enjoyed uh, this this game and this video. We just saw this white position fall apart really quickly from what seemed like a normal move in the opening. But you have to be careful not to expose your king side to an attack by your opponent's pieces especially if you're not on f3 somehow wanders away it's a very valuable defender and then the knight on f6 for the black side valuable defenders and once they're gone you can potentially you can potentially leave your king exposed which is what happened in this case and um there was just nothing left for for white to do it was just sit back and watch his army just get obliterated so so thank you so much, and um, we'll see you next time with the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to like the video if you enjoy the content, and uh, we'll come back with another one soon. Thank you so much.